And I will go to the very opposite of Ryoto, to Lebia Suds, who was also born on the 31st of, uh, uh, 31st of uh, May. And he represents the opposite because his, his uh, magnificent drawings actually are born from pessimism rather than optimism. Although maybe he would have uh, debated that. I have several um, um, attempts at, at presentations about him. Last year, we had 250 people here uh, on Zoom when I paid homage to Levia Suds. They came because I invited some well-known architects and they did come like Stephen Hall and Wolf Briggs. And uh, that's why we had a very large, uh, a very large audience. Now with Lebia Suds, I had a personal relationship uh, for a number of years, a long number of years. Uh, and we were friends for a, for a time, uh, not a short time. So I, I knew him well. And um, uh, I think he appreciated me more than I appreciate myself. As for him, you will see, you will see his works. He was an amazing uh, uh, draftsperson. Uh, I mean, his drawings were incredible. Uh, he drew manually and, uh, and uh, but he was more than just a draftsperson. He was also what is called a visionary. He envisioned worlds, but those worlds didn't have the optimism of the of the world uh, envisioned under the big umbrella by uh, Fray Otto. So we'll look at some of his drawings. Um, you know, he uh, he allowed himself to to dream, but also to have nightmares, architectural nightmares, if you want to to say something like this. I look like, for example, here, you know. Now imagine the optimistic uh, uh, techno umbrella that uh, Fray Otto, uh, you know, uh, proposed to us. And with such a ruin or such a ruined building or such a uh, viscerally tormented building underneath. I think uh, Lebia Suits tried to express a psychological truth. And this destruction was within himself. He was fighting with the darker side of the human life, something that uh, Fray Otto didn't address. Uh, again, a ruin. What is this? This is part of a series of, of drawings that he called uh, earthquake architecture. Uh, you know, it's, is it possible to actually build in this way? Maybe it is possible. Is it advisable? I'm not sure. But he was trying to, uh, to, uh, to not to come to terms. Although I have to say his father died when he was a, a child uh, in connection with, uh, with, uh, with the Second World War. I don't know if during the Second World War or, or something happened to work for that, uh, maybe the Manhattan Project or something. Anyway, he died because of the military uh, uh, tragedies provoked by uh, war, the, the, the one that happened or the one they were preparing for. So Lebia Suits lost his father. And I think that had, had great, great significance for him. One day I told him, Lebius, you are a father with our children and a child without a father. Or should I say the opposite, in, in the opposite order, you are a child without a father and a father without children. Although he did have children, but he didn't live with them. And then his so-called children were his disciples, his followers. Anyway, he, he, he drew uh, in amazing ways. But what he drew, again, let's compare what we look at with what we just looked at in the works of Fray Otto. You know, uh, you know, the two sides of the same uh, uh, the same profession. No, uh, in both cases, two architects. Uh, one was imagining uh, this kind of uh, uh, tormented world, while the other one was trying to imagine that there was nothing tormenting in the world. War and architecture. He wrote that architecture is war, and that war is architecture. 
Um, this is a futurist uh, painting, uh, and there are relationships between futurism and uh, and uh, and his uh, drawings. Look at this, you know, the the uh, building that became uh, almost a war machine. There is war indeed here, uh, and uh, he was he was affected by war, by losing his father, I would say. But there was there was a war within himself. Look at this building. Tormented, broken, a ruin. Uh, he drew impeccably, but as I wrote in an essay, I wrote about him. He, I liked the way he drew, but I didn't like what he drew. What he drew, I mean, uh, the manner of drawing was uh, incredible, but but uh, the subject matter, so to speak. Um, debatable, at least in some works. Initially, he was still questing for wholeness, for bringing fragments together. And of course, he was like all of us, uh, um, you know, affected by the evolution of architecture, you know, from postmodernism to deconstruction uh, and beyond. What is the relevance of these drawings? I think they are relevant. If architecture is a state of mind, as Le Corbusier said, and not a profession, then a drawing is, uh, is uh, evoking uh, the mechanisms of architecture with, uh, with uh, sometimes with uh, sufficient uh, power, like in Antonio Santelia or uh, in Piranesi or now in Lebia Suds. And maybe there is some truth in what um, Peter Eisenman said that uh, a project Sometimes it's more, I don't even know if he used the word sometimes, that's my word. A project is more architecture than the built work. I'm not sure about that. I still think a building, if possible, should be built and confronted with the realities of life, with living in it, uh, outside of it, with the elements, hitting it and so on, with the passage of time. But for the architectural thinking, the drawing uh, uh, carries uh, uh, an intensity and a purity that uh, maybe, uh, and maybe without maybe, uh, the, the built work doesn't. Uh, you see here, war, again, war. Uh, it's also the war of the new against the old because we see these buildings representing, you know, kind of old tradi so-called traditional architectures with sloping roof and so on. And then we have the, the explosion, the fury, the assault of the new upon the old. Uh, so um, I know he had a problem with authority and maybe that also had to do with him not having a father. Um, he was a rebel. A rebellious, um, a rebellious architect. He even wrote, and I have that text here, uh, um, resist, and I'm going to read that text to you because it's like a manifesto. So what we see here, we see the demolition of the old with brutality and then the madness of revolt. The new is attacking the old but the new is rather monstrous. It's not optimistic. It's not the optimism of Fray Otto, no. I, I imagine he did his drawing before the collapse of the World Trade Center. I don't know. I could verify, but it's possible. So, uh, you know, psychologically, there was within him some kind of an anticipation. It's about conflict the conflict between reason and unreason. The office tower as an expression of reason or rational thinking, and then the metallic animal uh, attacking the, the rational box violently. This was done not by him, but based on, on, on his drawings. It's, it's actually a rendering. It was not built. It would have been interesting if it was built, but it was not. 
great uh, modeling though, very convincing. It's hard to tell, it's not a real picture of a built world. This is uh, from his serious uh, earthquake, uh, earthquake architecture. Uh, he was, uh, this, I, it's possible this was proposed for Sarajevo or connected with the war in Sarajevo. Um, but look at the exquisiteness of this drawing. Look at that, look, look how magnificently is drawn the sky, you know, and again, this was done manually. Um, but it's not just about the technique, but what does he show here? You know, uh, an impossibility in a way, some things, some fragments of machineries, more than buildings, ignoring gravity and flying, flying or this. This is not really architecture, it's some kind of a science fiction uh, creation. Conflict, war. I mean, look at this window and look what is happening here. Look at the monstrous uh, arrival here on this uh, old street. Lebius, who is very, very admired and appreciated by uh, many young architects and uh, students, and maybe not only young. That's why last year on the 31st of May, we had here 250 people on this very Zoom platform. Um, maybe many people, especially young, are dissatisfied, you know, they want some kind of a truth that life has lived is not murmuring, is not saying, and uh, is maybe they see something liberating in the drawings of Lebia Suits. Look at this again, the collapse of reason, the collapse of uh, rationality, the collapse of the Cartesian tower, and the fragments that result seem to generate, uh, uh, you know, uh, something else or suggest, suggest something else. We see here the word change, change. And I remember the motto of the Vienna or Vienne uh, biennial two years ago, change was our only chance. He built very little. We are going to see a fragment uh, that he built in China, thanks to his good friend, Stephen Hall, we invited him to build a uh, part of a housing complex that he built and he built. And uh, indeed, Stephen Hall was a, was a loyal, good friend uh, for uh, Lebia Suits. He built us of this structure, the students somewhere, I forgot, I think uh, in Los Angeles or on the West Coast of the United States, they built this. Um, I don't know if he did a project per se, how would you actually make a project per se of this, but it is interesting, this, uh, this uh, uh, I don't know how to call it, you know, this uh, architectural uh, uh, verbiage or, or foliage in a way, it's not a foliage, there is disorder here, it's, again, if we compare it with Fray Otto, there, there was still a belief in reason, in calculation, here we have a revolt against all that. By the way, Lebia Suits was also a great, uh, and you can uh, see his, uh, uh, there is a, um, um, you know, a blog that he, 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 he kept. He was a very astute critic and he wrote very, very well. Um, and he taught at Cooper Union in New York in his later years. This reminds me a little bit of what, in a more innocent way, the people in uh, Amereida, in Ciudad Abierta, in uh, Chile built, actually. Old, uh, an old drawing. He was able also to, uh, you know, uh, Imagine the monumental architectures, not just um, what we saw here. 
like here, for example. This was not built. This came from his imagination. Kind of a nostalgic technology is kind of strange. In a way, what we look at here is uh, an almost an Otto Wagner architecture. And uh, um, somehow I cannot avoid to think about what Salvador Dali said, that he was a monarchist and an anarchist. So here we see some, some uh, complicity with authority. You know, the dome itself is an expression of authority. And, uh, you know, I, I thought of Otto Wagner. Otto Wagner was an architect who, who lived and worked, uh, you know, for a good number of, of years uh, under the emperor in, uh, in um, Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so here we have the rebellious contemporary architect, but he was younger here, it's true, but still, labia suits. And uh, uh, so we have the anarchist, but we also have the, the, the monarchist in a way, you know, and it's a paradox, it's a, it's a conflict. And then, uh, of course, we have the collapsed, uh, um, you know, architectural reality because perhaps the conflict between the two you know, anarchy and, uh, you know, uh, some kind of an unrecognized, uh, uh, perhaps, uh, belief in, in monarchy. I remember I had once a discussion with him and uh, I, 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 I mentioned Bismarck was, uh, you know, the steel man, the iron man of uh, what was uh, Germany at that time. And I said, I said that I, I was, I was, uh, I was comparing Bismarck with the sun great son, S-U-N. And I said, well, you cannot compare a human being, even Bismarck, with the son. And he said, no, 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 Bismarck is, uh, uh, is, is uh, he, he inferred that, that Bismarck was more important than, uh, than, uh, than the son. Of course, I didn't believe, and I still don't know if he was joking or not. But uh, strange that uh, he said what he said, that Bismarck, uh, you know, uh, the Iron Man was uh, was more important or stronger than the sun. I wouldn't say that. Anyway, um, so other drawings by Lebia Suds. Here he was uh, in his apartment. Um, you know, he was struggling financially, but in his later years, I think he got lucky because he, uh, Hollywood made a film uh, with a, a part of his that film uh, being inspired by a drawing that he did without letting him know. So he sued, um, you know, that studio in Hollywood and he won. And <laughs> that's why he has here a penthouse. When I knew him, he didn't have any penthouse and he was struggling. But isn't it strange that the man who made the drawings he made, you know, look at this library is is very you know peaceful with our books you know uh, placidly uh, quietly and beautifully sitting here on the shelves and look at the chairs all patient and there are even flowers on the table when i met him he was a you know a tormented uh, younger man he was 40 when i met him and uh, th there was in his room it was like in his drawings a total devastation, you know, the, the window was broken, you know, beautiful drawings all around and paintings and so on, furious paintings. Well, it's true, uh, here later on, he, he found, I guess, some, some peace with his uh, um, uh, third or fourth wife. He also became a father again. Anyway, here he is uh, at, at, at his desk, or one of his desks, I don't know, and um, a very kind man, and we, we were good friends. For uh, for uh, for example, I can tell you a personal story. I invited him to to, to come and visit me. I was living in Brooklyn at that time, and um, it took him a while to come, but he came in, in the end. And I, I you know I I I I, I created a special uh, uh, stage uh, uh, design, so to speak. I put my 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 best work, so to speak, on the walls. And I hid some, some less accomplished works behind the screen. And when he entered that room, he went right straight 
there where he was not supposed to go, that is behind that screen. And I, I screamed at him. I said, Leb, Libius, please don't go there. there. There are unimportant things. And he told me something memorable and I, I, I realized he was correct. He said, no, no, I want to see what you hide. And I, I, this makes me think that we have, most of us, have very interesting works that we hide away for various reasons. In our drawer, uh, in our computers, we ourselves don't believe in those works or other people criticize them, professors, assistants, colleagues, or ourselves, as I said. But I think sometimes there are riches in those hidden works, those that are within uh, drawers or under the table or who knows where and some unopened folders and files. And I think it's important to, to face uh, the, the hidden part of ourselves. I, I, truly, I truly think so. And I'm probably myself not very good at it, but I think we should be good at it. Here he is. Hello, uh, Levius. Uh, he died at 72. And uh, now we, we look at some images uh, from the work built by, and I like this work by Stephen Hall very much. What Levius Suits did was this, this part. And I, I uh, read or I listened to an interview with Stephen Hall. He struggled because the, 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 you know, the developer uh, for this large project didn't want to do this. And fortunately, Stephen Hall was able to convince him to do something in order to uh, bring light to the large courtyard, if I am to call it so, between these buildings. Because this is very, very big. I mean, you know, uh, yes, the buildings are huge, but uh, you see there's four or five floors uh, high. So, uh, you know, this is not a, a little thing. And there is a YouTube uh, video that you can uh, watch with Stephen Hall enjoying themselves in, himself uh, th right there uh, in, in, in this thing that, uh, that uh, Lebius built. What is its function? Disruption, I would say, you know, to disrupt the order of things. This was Lebius Woods. Now, of course, there were already disruptive elements in the building designed by Stephen Hall, like these diagonals. But uh, uh, Lebius uh, pushed uh, disruption even further. Uh, and this is the drawing that inspired Hollywood. Uh, and there was a movie with Bruce Willis uh, sitting, in fact, on an almost identical uh, chair. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was because of this drawing that Lebia Suits did uh, that uh, he afterwards um, sued uh, that studio in, uh, in, in Hollywood and, and, and he won. Now, what do we see in this drawing? I would say this is a, uh, uh, this is a drawing which, uh, which uh, um, cannot make us uh, uh, you know, ne totally neglect a possible encounter with a, with a supreme uh, uh, creator, you know? I mean, what is this fear? And what is this uh, chair, you know? If you place a human being here, I mean, even a Bruce Willis had to face the, uh, the stern authority of what was emanating from the sphere. Maybe this is kind of a visionary drawing of the of the last judgment, you know, the day when you are judged, when you die and you meet the creator and the creator looks at you and uh, asks you, what did you do on that day? And why, why did you sin in this way, you miserable human being? And then you have a grimace and say, well, what can I do, uh, God? You know, I am limited and imperfect. 